Hello again, everyone. Today I am here with a small unboxing from Yoseka Stationery. It's been a little while since I've ordered any stationery items from them, mostly because uh, I haven't needed anything. I have plenty of stationery items, but this was one that I really wanted to, well, the, there are several things in here, but the fountain pen that is in here is one that I have wanted uh, pretty much since I saw it, although <laughs> that might that actually was pretty recently. But um, but anyway, I'll just get to it. I'll, I'll take all this stuff out and then we will take a look. So they always include some really nice washi, which I always try to save. Sometimes it doesn't always work, but I will do my best here. Let's see. Oh, yeah, this might be a loss, but with craft paper, washi tape doesn't always come off super well, but that's kind of cute. Some little pineapples. I'll put that in my planner. And okay, so here's the fountain pen, which is a Twisby. You can probably guess what it is based on <laughs> what has come out recently. And then I have a bunch of drawing pens. Um, there, I've been trying to try some different black pens, and then this is a gold marker, um, some, some different pens to try and write more often with. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, and so it looks like they have a new little card that they include, and they're including some new staff members there, and then they still have a little thank you note at the bottom. Uh, <laughs> glow in the dark. Yeah, so that, spoiler alert, this is the glow in the dark Twisby Eco. So let's go ahead and put that bag away. Um, I do have some paper off to the side to try these. Let's see how long it takes me to get through the Twisby Eco. <laughs> and then I may test these out too, because there's some actually some pretty interesting things in there. But in the meantime, let me get it a little bit closer. And let's go ahead and open this up. So I'm very curious to see, oh, I need to get my little box cutter so that I can just cut through this little sticker. Okay, I think that should work. Okay. I'm very curious to see how it's different. <laughs> It is quite different, actually, from the uh, green one that was released not too long ago. And I'm wondering, wondering if you could actually, it's because I have all this light, it's going to be really hard to see the glow in the dark function. Um, let me see if I take it over. And I think you kind of have to charge it in light for a little while in order for it to work. So I'm probably not going to be able to test the glow in the dark feature, but it is pretty cool. I'm pretty happy about that. Um, so that's all that's in here, and I did want to bring out, let me actually put that aside, I did want to bring out the, um, I, th I think it's called the Jade Green Twisby to show you the difference, and I actually have not yet filled this one. I've been trying to not just automatically fill any pen that I get. <laughs> I try to, I'm trying to methodically go through them, and um, what I have not been doing but plan to do from here on out is to just have a few, well, they're probably gonna be some that are inked for like all the time because you know, they've, they've been inked for a while and they don't dry out. But my plan is to have at most 10 pens that I purposefully fill with ink that I use until, um, until they're out of ink. I think I'm going to give myself a little bit of leeway to maybe, you know, swap out one of the pens at some point before it runs out if I really feel that way. But um, yeah, so I'm really trying to cut down on inking all of my pens just because I had sort of a marathon cleaning session for all of my pens. It took me, I think, three or four days doing like several hours of pen cleaning. It's it's like it's like what a masochist does. <laughs> is clean their pens for days but uh it really needed to be done there were several that were really really in need of cleaning and so I'm now starting at kind of ground zero 
for a lot of my pens, except for the ones that don't seem to dry out. A lot of the pens that dried out, they completely dried out because I can't possibly use all of the pens I have in my collection all the time, and I can't use them before the ink dries out in them. So I'm trying to go from ground zero, not automatically ink everything up as soon as I get it, and put things in the rotation. Um, so anyway, this is back to the Twisbees. So like I said, this is the glow in the dark, and then this is the jade green. I was wondering how close they would be because in the pictures they actually looked pretty similar, but they're definitely different enough if you have the jade green. And um, I mean, I was even willing to put up with a similar color, but you know, glow in the dark, but, um, but they are different. So there's the two together. And I've, I think I've shown this one on the channel before, but this, <laughs> I just realized I got the same nib on both of these. So this is a 1.1 stub. Uh, and so is the new one. <laughs> For some reason, I thought I'd gotten a broad on this one. Uh, you know, that's how it goes. Um, so yeah, so this is a 1.1 stub as well. I do like the stubs, so it's not going to be a problem to use them. But like I said, I'm not going to be testing these out or filling these today. It's really just, here's the difference in color between the new glow in the dark and the Jade uh, Twisby Eco. And I do have to say that the Twisby Eco is one of those fountain pens that doesn't dry out. I have had Twisby Ecos that have been sitting with ink in them for uh, probably like two years without much use and they don't dry out and the ink is still fine and it flows great. Uh, so these are definitely one that I recommend for people who maybe don't use their fountain pens as much um, or live in a very dry environment like I do. Uh, and just want to have a pen that's going to be ready whenever they actually want to use it, these seal really well. So that's one of the reasons why I really like the Twisbees on sort of the lower end of the price spectrum. All right, and some of these are wrapped in plastic, which I'm a little not irritated about, but <laughs> if I do want to test these for you, I'm going to have to take off the plastic. So this is, um, hmm. so this is a, okay, so this is a, uh, like a calligraphy pen that has a soft, tip um, and all of these mm, with maybe the exception of these two are permanent inks so I'm trying to um, expand my collection of permanent ink stuff so this is actually a brush pen with a, a larger well, or calligraphy pen with a larger nib on one side and a smaller nib on the other this side is similar to that one so I kind of wanted to try them out uh, this is a pen I have not tried before. This is the Pilot Multi Ball. And actually I think this is permanent because it said it had um, oil-based ink. And let's see, doesn't really say much else. I did get a, a fairly small tip, but I can't remember what size I got. Uh, but I do have some watercolor paper, just a scrap off to the side so I can test these for you. Okay, and so this is a Uni Ball Air Micro. Uh, this was recommended by one of the teachers in fodder school, and so I decided to give it another look because I already have the regular Uniball Air, which is a, a larger uh, tip or a larger nib, and I have not liked it. It's just because it takes forever to dry. Um, it will be permanent after it's dried, but it takes forever and a day to dry, <laughs> and it smears. So that's why I haven't really liked it, but maybe since this will put down less ink, it won't be as smeary. So given that it's got such a glowing review, I thought I would try this pen out again in the micro size. And then these, so this is a twin, Pilot Twin Marker. Um, again, broader on one side, thinner on another. And I think this is the sepia color, but again, it's a permanent marker. And then I um, have been trying out different gold markers lately. This is, um, so these are like one of the stinky gold markers, this, um, but it's a narrower tip. So I thought I'd try it and this is by Pilot. And that one does have to be shaken to use. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I have my, it's just a little scrap piece of watercolor paper. I always keep my scraps because I always use them. Basically, I'm either gonna test colors out um, when I'm painting to see if I have the right color. So I will, I will use even smaller strips than this for that purpose. 
um, or if they're big enough, I will use them to uh, create little um, like swatch papers so that I can see what's in a particular palette. Uh, so lots of uses for these spare or um, excess watercolor paper that you don't use. And don't ever throw your watercolor paper out, which I don't. I don't even throw out little tiny, oh God, this is taking forever. Um, I don't even throw out little tiny bits of watercolor paper because sometimes I will add um, just like one, I will replace a color in a palette and then I end up uh, replacing just the color on my little swatch card. Um, so even little tiny pieces, I'll just glue them over the old one. So I really do use spare watercolor paper quite a lot, which is why I never throw it away. And even my used ones I don't throw away because um, sometimes there is still like a, my, my thing with my knife is full. Um, sometimes there's just, there's a little bit of usable space on a piece of paper. So, you know, I'll put it aside and then pull it out whenever I need to swatch something or see if it's the right color. Um, or I will um, like doodle over some swatches and stuff that I've done before and then use it as collage material or um, or I will just use use the old swatch sheets as collage material on their own. The only problem is watercolor paper is a little thick for um, collaging but um, but still I never throw it away. It may seem kind of like a hoarding situation but <laughs> it's not. I use it. Okay, so let's start with the gold marker first. So these markers, I think they might be oil-based. Um, yeah, these are probably toxic. <laughs> so, and they will be smelly, which is kind of why I wanted to get this one out of the way. But it does have a very, very fine tip, which is why I was kind of interested in this one. Because not a lot of the um, gold markers have such a fine tip. So in order to get it flowing, you, oh, oh, that's actually really great. You push down and wait until the ink starts flowing. But this is actually, oh, this is great. This is like a perfect, you can get kind of a, even a finer line if you just use the side. Okay, that's gonna be good. Um, I do doodle a lot with gold markers. And um, the this is great. This is actually, cause it's really, really intensely gold. Um, Oh yeah, <laughs> I wish I had not smelled that. It does have a very strong sort of chemically alcoholy smell. Um, so just FYI, use in a well-ventilated area, which is why I don't use these a lot, but I picked this one up because it did have such a narrow tip and I'll definitely be using that. Okay, so let's try this sepia one. And um, again, this is a soft tip. Well, no, it's more like a felt tip. And this is actually really nice too. Oh, I love that color. Hmm, I wonder if this is actually brown. It might just be brown. But it's sort of a reddish brown, which is really, really nice. So that's the thicker side. And then, oh, the thinner side is actually really, really thin. Oh, this would be a great fine liner, actually. And this should be waterproof as well. I might... Um, I do have a pot of water off to the side, so when I'm done, I'll probably go over these and see how they do. In fact, because I'm gonna do that, let's go ahead and do the Uniball Air, because that has historically <laughs> taken a long time to dry. Uh, so yeah, so it has this really interesting tip, and it actually feels really, really nice to write with, or at least the the um, bigger one does. Oh, that's actually really nice. But um, it's very, very smooth, and it will write on, um, surfaces that have texture. So that's kind of nice about this as well. And this actually is quite a bit finer than the one I have. So I'm hoping that it will dry faster and be permanent sooner. <laughs> so let's see. So we'll leave that there. All right. And then let's try the Pilot Multi Ball, which, oh, that's really nice and thin. Yeah, nice, 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 nice. Um, that's actually really, really nice. I think We'll see. We'll see if all these are waterproof. I tried to get waterproof markers. Okay, yeah, so this is the flexible one. And I'm terrible at calligraphy, you guys. So um, what you can do is 
do narrow on the upstroke, thick on the downstroke, and I tend to really suck at that. Um, <laughs> But what I've been <laughs> more than I don't do a lot of calligraphy, but what I've more been using these for is like mark making because I do really like these sort of like little tick marks on things. And with these soft brush pens, you can get a lot of variety in the type of mark that you make. So you can make like these little tiny. Actually, let me zoom in a little bit so that you can see that better. Um, so like you can do these little tiny marks, or you can do these really broad marks. Um, you also can kind of use the side of it to get some dashes and stuff like that. So these are really good for mark making and that's generally what I'm using them for. And then, oh, this is super soft on the side and it's a cute little thing. Okay, so this is nice. Let's, let's try this as well. This one seems a little easier to control between thick and thin. Um, but like I said, I generally have a hard time with that. I, cause I, I think it's because I tend to press hard with pens, um, although I've gotten better with that since I started writing more with fountain pens because you can't write really hard with a fountain pen. Um, but generally I kind of write sort of hard with a regular pen and uh, you really have to kind of have a delicate touch to get those lighter upstrokes, even with these pens, which are kind of better to write with. All right, and this is soft as well, like it's sort of like a little brush pen, but it's different than these. Uh, this is by Zebra. The previous one was by Pilot, I think. No, it's also by Zebra. So these are both by Zebra. Um, yeah, the other ones were Pilot, but okay. Yeah, and this is actually really nice because it's you can get a super fine line. Super fine. Okay, so let's try... Okay, there you go. So that's actually pretty good. So there's all of those pens there. And now I'm going to get out my, so maybe I can move stuff out of the way. Let's test it with a little water. I'm just gonna use plain water. I'm not gonna go over it with watercolor because that would make it more complicated. <laughs> all right, so let's, I'm just gonna let's see. This is my Princeton round velvet touch number five. So this, completely, completely waterproof. This one, completely waterproof. There's a, maybe a tiny, tiny bit of bleed. Um, okay, so that's much better, but you can see that it's still a little smudgy, but that's much, much better than the broader, um, what is it, Uniball Air. That's much better performance than the bigger one, which I've used. Oh, God. This mat has really taken a beating. <laughs> it's really looking rough. Okay, so let's see where I am. And then we have this. Um, okay, so that one also works really, really well. That Pilot Multiball. And it was really nice to write with. I think I actually prefer the Multiball over the Uniball Air. But I don't know if it would write on irregular surfaces as well as the Uniball Air. And this is a Uniball Air Micro. Okay, so there's that goes over that great okay and then let's go to the smaller one Ooh, this one does have a little bit of bleeding but it did just go down recently um, so given that this is not smudging to me means that eventually it will be waterproof but there you go so this was just some waterproof pen testing I'll see if I can find the individual pens if you're interested and I will, um, so you know what they are. I'll at least put the model name. Um, I'll go back and look at my order and get those specific names. And then of course there is the glow in the dark Twisby. Um, this is not the new one, this is the Jade, which also is a lovely green color. This one's a little bit more sort of acidy green, but um, I'm wondering, I can see, yeah, I'm still not really seeing any glow in the dark, but I'm probably not, <laughs> not in the best location for that. Uh, and I've always kind of been on the fence about glow in the dark pens because like I'm not writing in the dark, so I'm not really sure what good they would do. I've, I kind of thought, felt that way about Bennu pens because um, they have a lot of glow in the dark models um, and I never had gotten one of them, but I do love the Twisby Eco. 
So that's why I got this one. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks, bye.